I started making up the Quintaglios when I was a teenager, reading Larry Niven, hadn't yet met him, of course, I was just a kid, but loving what he was doing with aliens. And he had his Kazinti, which were uh, big cats evolved to uh, sentience, or at least the males, very Niven-esque. We, can, we don't have to go there, but he had a penchant for uh, making females much dumber than males, which doesn't age as well as one might hope it would today uh it, it, in reading larry's you go larry come on you know but he was writing this stuff in the 60s and got away with it then uh but i i wanted to do intelligent dinosaurs i had always wondered about this thought experiment since i was a kid you know we didn't know when i we know now that dinosaurs were wiped out by the impactor that hit uh, chicxul mexico 66 million years we didn't know that when i was a kid all we knew is that they had mysteriously died out and then mammals became ascendant so i wonder what would have happened and i had created the quintaglios way at physically the wholly the wrong way to do this i started with the anatomy the physiology of an intelligent dinosaur and worked my way backwards from there but it was not intended farseer ultimately which was one of those ideas that just hits you like lightning i thought what because uh, you know i guess it was around the time that i was doing all this was around the time when voyager uh, one and two a pioneer no voyager one and two were being launched to the outer solar system and we hadn't yet gotten to Jupiter or Saturn, but we were talking a great deal about we were going to get our first close-ups of these worlds. And I thought, I know, you know, amateur astronomers since I was a kid, I know that our moon is tidally locked. So the moon always faces the same side towards the Earth, which means it also always faces the same side, the erroneously called dark side of the moon. It's only dark when it happens to be lunar night. It's bright light it hits that side just as often as it hits the, the uh, side that faces the Earth. But if you were on a world that wasn't solid rock, but had an ocean, and you lived on an island on the far side, you wouldn't even know that you were orbiting a gas giant. And I thought, what would happen when Columbus, a version of Columbus, came across the Terminator to the day to the side facing the the gas giant and saw this hypnotic swirling psychedelic vision coming up over the horizon oh my god quite literally oh my god it would be taken as a deity so I had that idea I put my dinosaurs into it that I'd made up separately boom had the novel Farseer sent it to my agent and he said called me actually uh which you're always the most exciting call an author gets is when the agent called rob i love this richard curtis was my agent at the time fine gentleman richard i love this i love this but you killed the main character at the end i said yeah well i thought it was very poignant I said no how can i sell the series if you kill the main character i said well i don't know i don't want to write a series come on he says no 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 no, no. this could be big well I made the change he suggested. We submitted it and managed to sell it as a trilogy and sent the series Farseer and its two sequels, Fossil Hunter and Foreigner. And in fact, uh, just in the next about two months from now, as we're speaking, summer of 2022, the 30th anniversary hardcover editions of that trilogy are coming out. And I'm so excited about that. So when I was developing the Quintaglio Ascension Trilogy, Farseer, Fossil Hunter, and Foreigner, it occurred to me, there's this famous saying from Sigmund Freud, who said, at, I did a minor in psychology at university, so I kind of steeped in Freud back, I'm old enough, back when he was still not considered the complete fraud that most uh, uh, historians of psychology would say he is today. But he said there have been three great blows to the narcissistic human ego. First, there was uh, Galileo or Copernicus, depending which version of the quote you heard, took us out of the center of the universe. Then there was Darwin, who said, we're not even divinely creative. We're just a random process of evolution. And then there was me, talk about narcissism, Sigmund Freud, who came along and said, and we don't even understand why we do anything. We're all governed by unconscious forces. And I thought that's true. They were blows to the ego, but they don't really matter. Now, I'm a huge booster of science, but there are people in the world and resurgent today, flat earthers who believe we are at the center of the universe. 
but they go around their lives on a day-to-day basis. They go to their work. They hopefully uh, treat their, their children, their spouses, and their pets just as well as anybody else does. There are tons of people in the world today. In fact, probably nearly about as many who believe we are divinely created without evolution. There are lots of religious people who do embrace evolution, but who believe we were divinely created by the hand of God in pretty much the form we're in today. And they, again, perfectly fine human beings. And then there are those who uh, believe that they understand the workings inside their ears, when in fact they don't at all understand why they're behaving. It doesn't matter, those three blows. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to contrive a trilogy where it was a matter, not just a personal life and death, but life and death for the entire species, that they recognize that they aren't the center of the universe, that they recognize that they're products of evolution, and that they learn to control the subconscious forces that make them so violent. So and if they don't do all three of those things, they will die as a race. And that's where it came from, just that one line of Darwin Alt, uh, sorry, that one line of Sigmund Freud ultimately was the progenitor for an entire trilogy of novels.